Hey guys, Nick here and this is my Linux experiment and in today's video I'd like to do a little follow-up on uh, the video I put out on how to edit videos with PTV. Uh, since then I tried Caden Live, just as I said in uh, the aforementioned video and uh, well I kind of fell in love with it. It is really a powerful and useful tool and uh, I'd like to take a little tour of how it works uh, with you right now. So what you're seeing here is my latest project, which was the uh, top seven reasons why elementary OS is awesome. So as you can see, it is a pretty complex project for what I do usually, because usually you have two or three tracks tops. Uh, now I've got a lot of them here. And uh, well, so Caden Life, how does that work? Uh, you can find it in the repositories in the App Center, of course. Uh, this is probably not the latest version, but it works really well and is really stable. So it's a, it is a multi-linear video editor, as you can see here. You've got all your lanes here, which can host video or audio. You can reorder them, uh, change the size to see more of your clips. Uh, you can rename them, etc., etc. So what you want to do is put all your video clips uh, in, the, in the different lanes uh, and put all your audio clips in the audio lanes right there. So each clip can be added through this little browser here. Uh, so you can just click on adding a clip and then you can go fetch the one you want. So you select the one you want to add and click OK and it's gonna add it to this browser. So by default, you can see it in tree view. Uh, I, here I created folders with this little button here to regroup what, what is audio and what is video. Uh, my regroupments are not that great because I've got here three title clips that have nothing to do in the audio department. So I'm gonna move them down here. If it accepts to scroll, there we go, in the video folder. You can also look at it in icon view like so, uh, to see your folders that you've created and see all your clips, all the musics, all the sound you've registered, etc. Et so, this browser allows you to drag and drive onto your uh, lanes, so you just drag them here and drop them, and it's gonna add them. Then you have several options. You can select them, this is the default tool, you can get to it by pressing the S key on your keyboard. There is the eraser tool, which allows you to snip uh, parts of your clips. So you just click on that, your cursor changes into some scissors, and when you click, it's gonna split the clip into two. So you can, uh, for example, packages. If I wanted to split this one, I could click here and here, and it's now in three parts. And if I wanted to delete that one, I just click on it with the select tool down there, and then, delete it. I'm going to cancel that. Uh, so that's the basics. Uh, you have also a spacer tool that allows you to add or remove spaces between clips, but uh, I haven't really uh, dabbled in it yet. Uh, then you have a few buttons down here. Uh, fit zoom to project, which here uh, it will automatically resize uh, this view here to see all of your clips. You've got the zoom out, which allows you to completely unzoom your project just to make sure you can see everything. And this little zoom slider that allows you to increase or decrease the size of each track. As you can see, it modifies the length here of each segment to see a specific portion and be more precise when you need to snip clips. Uh, then you've got a few buttons down here, a split audio and video automatically, which allows you to, when you import a video clip which has audio, it's gonna automatically create an audio track and a video track. You also have uh, the ability to show the video thumbnails on or off. I prefer them on so I can see which clips does what. Uh, you have the audio thumbnails here, which I can hide. It basically shows you the waveform of your audio. It's easier to see the pauses when you speak and uh, allows you to trim more easily your clips. And then you have the marker commands. I don't use markers as of yet, but it allows you to put some specific points, uh, maybe to remember where to clip uh, the, the little videos, etc. So you've got the snap tool, which allows you to uh, snap videos automatically. And uh, well, I use it a lot because it allows you when you move a clip to make it stick to where it's supposed to do uh, in regards to other clips. So that's a, a bit easier to manage. So that's basically your editor. Uh, then you've got your tracks. You can rename them, insert more, delete, configure, etc. Uh, in the configuration tracks, you can hide some, mute some, uh, lock some in place, etc. And uh, say if you want to compose them or not. So do you want to layer them on top of each other or not? 
here you can see your uh, rendering view. So when you move the cursor on your timeline, you can see it shows you what it's going to look like at any point. You can also play it to see what happens. So if I just let the video play it by itself, I can just let it run like so. Uh, you can of course uh, select a specific track and you can uh, see it in a uh, separate player. You can uh, change the volume here, etc. It's basically a media player just allowing you to see what you're doing right there. So that's the basics. Then uh, what you'll want to do is, uh, well, put your clips into place uh, in the tracks down there, just to make sure that everything is nice and nicely laid out. You need to trim your clips first to make sure that you only show what you want people to see, and uh, that's about it. Then you can get into the effects. So effects are a nice way to add some flair to your video or to your audio. So personally, I don't use them that much. I use a volume effect to boost my microphone volume because it's pretty low uh, if I don't do that. And I use it. I use the mute effect to uh, stop uh, the recordings uh, of the screen to have uh, some parasite, parasite noises such as uh, mouse clicks, etc. So that's basically it. You can have you have a gigantic FX browser here. So you just select the clip you want to apply an effect to. You click on effects, and then you have a long list of what you can do. You've got some audio filters, uh, maybe to get some echo or to adjust the volume. You've got some audio channels, some audio correction. Uh, you've got some fade effects, fade in and fade out for audio as well. But of course, you also have video effects with some fade to blacks, fade from black. Uh, a little color gradient, etc. Uh, you've got some motion effects, which allows you to freeze or speed uh, the audio the video. You can enhance with uh, noise removal tools, uh, sharpen the image. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. I haven't really uh, looked at it uh, that much, but uh, there is a lot to do here. And of course, you've got your transitions that you can put on every clip. Uh, such as a white, for example, if I wanted to put a transition between those clips, I could just drag the wipe transition down there and the transition will be added. For transitions, there is a specific thing you need to know is that your clips need to overlap so it's able to transition from one to the other, such as this. That is a little dissolve transition. And if I wanted to do a wipe transition, I did that one. Okay. So as you can see, my clips are overlapping a little bit. So this title clip here is overlapping with this clip named History. And the transition is between those clips. So I can obviously resize it to make it longer or shorter. There's no problem here. And you can click on the transition to select which type you want. So there are a lot. I use mostly dissolve and wipes. And so you can here select the kind of wipe transition you want to use. There's a lot to play with. You can obviously reverse the transition and play with the softness uh, to make it less sharp and easier on the eyes. So that's basically it for Caden Live. It is a really useful tool. You also have some nice additions which, are, which I used a lot, such as the type clips, such as these which you can do right there in Add Title Clip. And you get a nice browser where you can add images, manage layers, uh, put some things on top, add some text. Uh, you can add some uh, basic shapes such as rectangles. You've got your font browser. Uh, that's basically easy to do. You can also animate them uh, to edit the start and the end. I didn't play with these because I used the transitions to manage these animations. And of course, if a title clip, if a title clip uh, is used a lot in your videos, you can add a template title, which you can reuse in a lot of things. You can also add some basic color uh, backgrounds. Uh, you can add some slideshows. Uh, that's, uh, that's about it for those useful tools. Uh, there are markers here, which I talked about, uh, which can allow you to have some guides on your videos to know some points where you need maybe to do more work to start a, an animation or a transition or an effect. Uh, it's pretty useful to, to do. And uh, well, your menus are pretty complete, such as every KDE app, you can edit your layouts. So if I maybe did not want to have such a big uh, browser, uh, video browser, I could resize that one. And if I wanted to see more of my clips, I could do that. And I can save this layout as a new layout, such as, for example, uh, I could call it Big Browser, which is not that great a joke, but of course it is still a joke. You can load it. So every time you open a new project, you can select the layout you want to do. 
And you have a lot of little uh, inspectors that you can uh, have, such as, for example, the waveform. So if I select a clip, I can get the waveform of the audio, for example. So, well, I hope you learned a few things uh, during this uh, little uh, video. Uh, I'm obviously still not an expert on video making. And uh, I am only starting to dabble with Caden Live, but I already enjoy it way more than PTV since it is a lot more stable, it doesn't crash as much, it's rendering way faster. I really don't know why, but this uh, video here is, uh, I think, uh, something like three minutes, and it only took four minutes to render. In PTV, it would have taken me something like 10 or 12 minutes. Uh, so. Obviously, it is way faster, but I really don't know why. You've got a lot of options, and the one I really like is that it allows you to export a selected zone. So you can already preview what your project will look like with a nice export, see if the quality suits you, without having to render the whole video. So if you have a 40 or 50 minute long video, you don't want to wait an hour to render. So you can just r render maybe like two or three minutes of the video, see if the quality is nice, if the audio is audible, and if it's not, you can return here and uh, change those settings. So, well, that's about it. I hope you learned a few things in this video. And, uh, well, I see you guys in the next one. Bye.